you join me today on a cold November day in England and it's pretty chilly in the workshop. I'm going to be making an accessory for my rotary tool. This one's a Proxon, but this will work for any rotary tool, maybe with a little bit of modification, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of something you can make for your rotary tool. Let's get tinkering. Now for this rotary tool accessory, we're going to need some bits. I've just looked around my workshop to see what I've got available. You're going to need a uh, bar that's about three foot in length. I don't have one of those, but I do have this bit of brass tubing and this bit of steel tubing, and I can stick these two together, um, putting one inside the other to get about three foot. I think metal's probably the best bet, but if all you've got is a bit of wood or a bit of dowel or an old broom handle, that's gonna be fine as well. It just needs to be about three foot long. I've then got some offcuts. These are all bits of hardwood from previous projects. You don't need hardwood. You could use MDF, pine or ply. You need something that's roughly, I don't know, about a third of an inch thick, quarter of an inch thick. Thickness isn't that critical. You just need some small pieces of scrap. And that's about it really. I've got this, I'll show you what this is for later. It's not really necessary, but I'm gonna, gonna use it. I'm going to start by tidying up this bit of scrap and I'll drill a hole the same diameter as the collar on the rotary tool. Now this is a pretty good fit but it's a little bit loose um, so I am going to drill a hole here and then add a nut and bolt and I found one of these little um, thumb knobs that I used on my modifications that I made to my table saw. So if you want some of these, have a look at that video. It just means I'll be able to screw this in and out using my fingers. So I'm basically now gonna drill down there and then we'll add this nut and bolt. I'm now gonna split this piece of wood as far as the large hole so that I've got a little bit of flex for the bolt when it's tightened to tighten against the collar of the rotary tool. So I should now be able to add this bolt through here Put the nut on and then add the rotary tool in there. Now you want to drill another hole in this board far enough away from this hole so that when the pole is put through the hole doesn't interfere with your rotary tool. That's going to be different for different rotary tools and different for different sized poles. I'm going to start mine off using a brad bit just so that I can get the hole in exactly the right place. Then I'll finish it off with the correct size twist drill bit. Now the outside diameter of this compared to the inside diameter of this is such that it's not much different, so I'm just going to add a little bit of tape around here just to make it an interference fit. I'm guessing probably only need a couple of layers. Let's see if that works. A bit more than that. Obviously, if you have one pole that's the right thickness you won't need to do this. There are probably better ways of doing this but this is simple. That's a pretty nice interference fit. In fact it's actually having to be screwed in using the thread. So I'm quite pleased with that. Now just because this nut happens to almost fit it's going to be an interference fit. I'm going to bang it into this tube. This step's completely optional. I don't really need to do it, but given that I have the knob and the nut, I'm going to anyway. This will make a bit more sense later. I'll now cut this piece off at a suitable distance. This is part of an old light fitting, but you could just use a piece of coat hanger wire. I cut and form a piece of brass into a pigtail spiral sort of shape. I then sand off the end that I cut so there aren't any shell edges. I 
cut a short piece of dowel that I've added a little conical chamfer to so that it'll fit inside the top of the tube. You won't need to do this if you're using a solid piece of wood. I then drill a hole in this dowel. I then fit the pigtail in the hole. Then fit the pigtail in the top of the tube. For this next adapter I need a slightly larger piece of wood. This is from an old chair. I'm going to start the hole off with a wider drill bit and finish it off with a slightly narrower one. I'm now going to cut a slot the same width as a smaller hole on the piece. It's that time in the video folks. If you haven't already please subscribe and click the thumbs up. This cut looks a bit close for my fingers, so I'm using a clamp. I can now tidy it up on the sander. I'm now going to use a 54mm hole cutter to cut some circles. Probably going to make three or four of these. I need to drill some holes around the circumference of these circles, so I've printed some templates, I just need to glue them on. And for this one I've adjusted the stop so that I don't go all the way through. This one needs holes on the side. And then eight magnets screwed in. I now just need to glue these two pieces together. The painting here is purely decorative and experimental. When I cut these two round pieces I also sanded off the edges and that left a little groove all the way around which looked a bit naff. So I thought rather than sand it down and try to remove the groove all the way around I'd just make it a feature and add a little dash of colour. We'll see how it comes out. Now I have all the pieces I need. Let's get to assembling it. The knob underneath secures it in place. I forgot to enlarge in these holes, they need to be 16 millimetres. So I bought a 16 millimetre drill bit. Unfortunately, when I used it on the pillar drill, it was too aggressive and it just snapped this in half. So I have to make another one of these. So I thought I'd try on my DeWalt drill and again it was incredibly aggressive and I just even with the clamp I just couldn't hold it and it just kept gripping it so that piece is ruined as well so I need to make another one and I need to find a solution for making these holes bigger. I do have these cheap Forstner bits which would work but because I've got a hole in these I've got no way of centering it so they're not going to work either. I also wondered if I could use one of those step drills. The problem with those is the steps aren't that deep so I'd end up with a V shape inside which I, which I also don't want. So at the moment I'm sort of stuck and I'm thinking that probably the only way to do this is either to fill the holes, that in itself is going to be a right pain, or 3D pre print them. And I think I'm going to go for the easy option of 3D printing them. It's not really what I wanted to do. But I do want to get this project finished. So I went with the 3D printed option and actually they turned out great. So I'm a bit disappointed that these didn't work out and I wasn't able to drill the right size hole in them without them breaking. But the 3D printer came to the rescue and I'm quite pleased with the results in any case. It looks pretty good and it now means that my rotary tool, rather than being stuck in a cupboard inside a box, is now available to use and hopefully I'll use it a lot more now. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you've got any questions or any comments on how to drill these holes without splitting them, 
then please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.